game-changing ideas. When I was told that I had to come up with a game-changing idea, I thought, no pressure. I will just reach out to my game-changing ideas drawer and pick one of the many I have just lying around. And surprisingly, the drawer turned out to be empty. But I'm going to do my best to try and change some of your ideas on credibility. My argument today is that you should care about credibility if you care about being heard. And who doesn't? We live in a speaker society. Everybody's speaking at the same time. It didn't used to be like this. Before, most of us were just listening to others on TV and on the radio. But now, everybody's creating content. Everybody wants attention. Newspapers, companies, influencers, strangers, everyone is just fighting to be heard. And credibility is our biggest argument for being heard. So what is credibility? What makes one credible? Credibility comes from the word credo, the Latin word credo, which means I believe. It is the collection of all the reasons we have to believe in someone. But to believe or not believe is an individual decision. And it is likely that different individuals will have different credibility standards. We know this very well because we live in a world where people believe in conspiracy theories and elect politicians who lie as comfortably as they breed. But even though it is ultimately an individual decision, there are certain ingredients that can help us increasing the likelihood of being considered credible. And I want to talk to you about the three most important ones. Attractiveness, expertise, and trustworthiness. And for each of them, I'm going to give you two tips on things you can do to improve how you're perceived for your credibility. The first one is attractiveness. And by attractiveness, I don't mean how good looking you are. I mean stuff like how familiar and likable someone is. This is why companies use celebrities to sell us stuff. We know them, we like them, we trust them. That is also why we follow people on social media, when they are authentic, giving us something to relate to, or when they are inspirational, giving us something to pursue. Attractiveness is actually why populists tell us anything they think we want to hear, because they want to create a connection with us. They want to be liked, so we trust them with our votes. Now, I'm not going to suggest you to become a populist, obviously, nor to become a celebrity, although if you can become a celebrity, by all means, go for it. But instead, I'm going to give you two other tips. The first one is to communicate with simplicity. Now, for ages, We've been thinking that if we use complicated words, people will think that we're so smart, so knowledgeable. But in fact, speaking that way kind of distances us from our audience, make us look less approachable. So we need to communicate with simplicity. Communicating with simplicity does not mean to speak lightly. It does not mean to ditch complexity altogether. In fact, to tackle hard issues, we do need to embrace their multiple layers of complexity. It is our ability to speak about complex issues in a simple way that makes us more approachable, more familiar, and in turn, more attractive. The second tip is practice empathy when you communicate. Empathy is the ability to share and understand the feelings of others. It does not mean to agree with others. It does not mean to recognize reason where we think there is no reason. It means recognizing the other person's point of view. Appreciating that we know nothing of the background of that person's opinion. And making an honest effort to understand them, especially if we disagree with them. Empathy is also about recognizing our own biases, our own privilege and how it may be coloring our worldview. Empathy is the essence of respect, is a way of recognizing dignity in a fellow human being. So to empathize and to respect is to create a connection, 
to open a bridge, which in turn will bring us credibility. On top of attractiveness, we want to, we want to have expertise. And expertise is really easy to explain. It is the perception that you know what you are talking about. It is easy to fake for a little, but impossible to fake forever. So I'm gonna give you two tips that may help how people perceive you for your expertise. The first one seems super simple. Don't talk about stuff you don't know. Now, wouldn't the world be a better place? Talking about stuff we don't know should literally be the easiest thing in the world. But it's not. Because somehow we think that if we have an opinion about everything, we look super informed, super interesting. That is why commentators on TV are happy to discuss everything, from geopolitics to health crisis to bridge engineering. That is also why if you go on the streets and you ask random people about stuff that never happened, some of them will have an opinion. And that is absolutely crazy. So if you want to improve the perception people have on your expertise, reserve your opinion for things you really know about. And then mix that with the second tip. Normalize saying, I don't know. In humans, ignorance is a feature. It is not a bug. It is physically impossible to know more than just a tiny amount of all of the things there is to know. I mean, the likelihood of not knowing something is huge. So why do we feel so bad when we have to say, I don't know? Why do we go through life suffering with imposter syndrome, terrified that people will realize that we are not as good and that we don't know as much? I'm a lawyer. I've been trying for most of my career to convince my clients that I have all the answers, that I know all the solutions, because I'm scared that if they know I don't, they will just leave and go for somewhere else. But then I started saying, I don't know more often. I don't know, but I will check. I ask them to trust in my ability to find out, to learn, rather than in this impossible idea that somehow I already know everything they want to know. Speaking only about what we know and saying, I don't know, often and publicly, tells our audience that when we have an opinion, when we indeed choose to speak, they can trust us because they know that otherwise we would stay silent. And that brings weight and relevance to what we say and make us look like experts. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, trustworthiness. Trustworthiness is the perception of our integrity, of our credibility, of our honesty. You can fake it by virtue signaling, faking outrage online, pretending to care about stuff you don't. But you cannot fake it forever. People will, will figure out. You can improve your trustworthiness, though, by doing these two things that we often have a hard time doing. I know I do. I struggle a lot here. The first one is to say I was wrong. Now, to say I was wrong is different than to say I don't know. Admitting ignorance is hard, but admitting that we were wrong is particularly, particularly hard. Because we live in a success culture. Our value is measured by our wins, by how often we get it right. So admitting that we were wrong kind of feels like admitting defeat. And let's face it, no one likes that. But no one is always right. That is just a basic fact of life. And when we do not admit that we were wrong, we don't get a chance to correct the record, our record. And that record is what people judge when they judge our trustworthiness. Who would you trust more? A journalist that makes a mistake and just goes on to the next article without saying anything. Or another journalist that tells you, I was wrong, but here is the correction. Now, maybe in the short term, the first journalist will benefit because let's face it, we may not recognize the mistake and they just get away with it. But over time, and building our credibility is a long-term project. 
over time, the mistakes will become apparent. They always do. And you will realize that the only difference between someone who says, I was wrong, and someone who doesn't, is that one is being transparent with you, and the other one is not. One is trustworthy, the other one is not. So saying I was wrong really builds up your credibility. The second tip, also very hard, is saying I changed my mind. Normalize saying I changed my mind. Saying I changed my mind is saying I was wrong plus you were right. And it still disturbs a lot of people. Because there is this freaky obsession about finding inconsistency, inconsistencies in someone's record. You say something and someone will come and say, 10 years ago, you were saying the opposite. And it's a whole drama. But people change. People grow. And maybe they would change more if changing your mind wasn't seen as such a misstep, such a bad thing to do. In fact, by creating this environment where changing your mind is seen as such a, such a bad thing, such a weird thing, we incentivize people to double down on their mistakes, to look for false information to support their views, and to join other people who are equally wrong so they can all be happily wrong together. The truth is that we cannot go through life without changing our mind a lot. And if we admit as often as it happens that we changed our mind, we are telling our audience that they can trust us to review, to update, and to improve our opinion. They can trust us to treat knowledge and the truth with the love and respect they deserve. And that they can trust us to not misrepresent information just to avoid admitting defeat. Over time, this helps a lot our credibility. And these were my simple messages to you on things that you can do to be credible, to be believed. Communicating with empathy and simplicity. Talking about things you really know and admit when you don't. Admit when you were wrong and don't be afraid of changing opinions. None of these are nearly as easy as they sound. Because we were taught to do the opposite as a way to rise above. Particularly men. We have a hard time exposing our vulnerabilities. We have all learned to be implacable and worthy as a way of winning debates. To always know the answer, or at least pretend to. To never admitting we were wrong, to sticking with our opinions. These are ideas that we must abandon if we want to be, rather than appear, credible. There is this old saying, you can fool some of the people all of the time, and all of the people some of the time, but you cannot fool all of the people all of the time. And I know, I know they did not have the internet back then, but the internet will soon record the entire journey of every human being in existence. From your pictures as a newborn on Instagram, posted by your parents, to a video of a 100-year-old you dancing with your grandkids on whatever version they will have of TikTok. The internet gave us great tools to fake it really well for a little bit, but it is also implacable in how it will keep fresh and alive every little detail of our lives. And that is why being credible takes so much more from us than appearing credible. It is the basis of our success in the speaker society. So we must build it on truthful foundations. We have to work on our integrity, our courage, our humility, and our vulnerability. We have to embrace mistakes. We have to embrace failure because what truly matters, what really impacts our credibility is what we do next, to recognize them and correct them or to pretend they never happened. And over time, maybe we will get the privilege not only of being heard, but also of being believed. Because 
Being believed by someone is a huge responsibility. But it is also an extraordinary gift that someone gives us. And what we do with that gift speaks volumes about who we are as a person and whether or not we deserve to be heard. Being credible may not be a game-changing idea, but without credibility, there is absolutely no hope that we will ever be able to change the game. Thank you.